Welcome to my summary of C.S. Lewis's book, The Great Divorce. A little bit of background, C.S. Lewis wrote this novel in 1944, and it was Lewis's rebuttal to William Blake's uh, poem, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. Whereas Blake said that heaven and hell, the good and evil, are somewhat two sides of the same coin, they're both good and necessary to life, Lewis wrote The Great Divorce to show that there is actually a great divorce between heaven and hell, between good and bad. To provide some context for the plot, we meet an unnamed narrator who gets on a bus, and it's a magic bus that flies over the gray town in which he's living, and it lands in the valley of the shadow of life. Once he gets off the bus, the narrator realizes that he is a ghost, and that he is actually on a vacation from hell, which was the gray town, and now they're on the forecourt of heaven. And the rest of the novel involves the narrator observing conversations between spirits from heaven and ghosts of hell. And the spirits are trying to convince the ghosts to leave hell and come to heaven. At the end of the novel, the narrator wakes up from a dream and reflects upon what just happened. My favorite theme is that of free will. Drawing upon the medieval idea of the refrigerium in which souls can take a temporary vacation from hell to heaven, Lewis shows how difficult it is for us to actually choose to leave our former sins behind, and to freely choose God. And so throughout the novel, we've seen many times in which these ghosts just cling to the sins of their former way of life. And even seeing what lays ahead, the glories of heaven, they cannot leave behind their sins. And so it's a really interesting reflection for us to think about, am I actually capable of freely choosing to love God above all other things in this life? My favorite symbol is that of the lizard. We see a conversation in which one of the ghosts carries a small lizard on his shoulder who whispers in his ear to prevent him from going to heaven. And there's an angel who's asking for the ghost's permission to kill the lizard. At first, the ghost does not want something so drastic to be done. Just put him to sleep, let him rest, uh, let him not bother me. But it, the angel makes it very clear that now is your only time. And by asking for permission, the ghost finally gives in and says, okay, do away with it. Kill the lizard. We see then this amazing transformation take place in which the ghost turns into a full-bodied person and the lizard transforms into a beautiful horse. And then the narrator watches the man on top of the horse ride into the mountains of heaven. This is a beautiful symbol of the deadly sin of lust and how it can be so crippling for us, so nagging for us. And it's only when we allow this uh, twisted erotic desire that turns into the deadly sin of lust to be directed for its full purpose of channeling our passions to what is noble and true and good in life, do we begin to experience the erotic desires that we have to become like a horse, a majestic, beautiful stallion that can actually propel us and inspire us to become saints and get to heaven. Whenever our desires are turned away from heaven and towards sin, they become like a lizard that just nags at us and destroys our life. And a good reflection is for us to think about, okay, am I willing to allow God to kill the lizard and to experience the beautiful stallion that would direct me to what I truly desire in life? I hope you enjoyed this short summary of C.S. Lewis's book, The Great Divorce. Click on the link below to go to the written text of my summary. God bless.